Okay. Blah blah blee, blee blee blah, hey bee baby. I'm just just doing the the regular getting the word out there. Make it a tweety. And then we make it a Discord notification. And then we go to this. See? I need to see it. I need to see the chat. Um, click. I think um, I may have a fuck it up and uh, ruined everything. I think I may have fucked up and ruined everything. Not everything, just like the last, I don't know how long it was on this planet. Just killing guys and getting raritanium. Because right now it's the uh, thing to do. Because I, uh, I turned off the console before I like left or like physically saved. I'm so used to things auto saving. So yeah, look, damn. I gotta do this all again. Well, it's fine. Um, can I see the chat? Is that the chat there? Yeah, alright. So, today, Henry's not here, he's uh, tired. So, he's doing his whole being in bed thing. I mean, I guess I could have asked him, but I don't feel like. It didn't look like he wanted to be bothered. But yeah, like. Mega Tesla barrier. You know. I'm just gonna go around, I'm gonna level up these weapons a bit, then I'm gonna go around in Raritanium. Get some Raritanium, get a bunch of Raritanium, get a fuck ton of Raritanium. I'm gonna aim for 50. And then, once I have 50 Raritanium, I will go um, to Slim Shady's shack buy as many ship upgrades as I can and uh, if I don't have enough then um I don't know I'll just go back or I'll do ship missions or something unlikely that I will have like all of the weapons upgraded by that point so I might just come back here and continue that's basically gonna be the stream is I'm gonna grind some shit and, uh, yeah, just talk. Like, if you, you know. Like, what's going on, guys? Like, what's going on? Like, just talking about shit. Talking about stuff. Talking about things. You know, just saying that I'm talking about stuff when I'm not actually providing any topics of conversation. That's what I'm gonna do. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, so how about that stuff? Um, lol. Oh, yes, Easter. Happy Easter. I hope you are having what can be described as a celebration. Goodness knows it's good to celebrate something. You know, I've been I've been looking at the Vic and Hope's videos that they've been trying to do. Vic was doing some vlogs for a while, and those were fun. And now he's like 
he was thinking maybe I should or shouldn't do like uh, anime videos or I don't know lol and now he's trying to do them and he made one that like got views and it's like yeah I really hope like whatever this turns out to be is like a good thing because Vic is a cool boy and he's funny Like, I, th I feel like in the quarantine phase, like, people who are not, like, directly currently affected, like, they don't have a person in hospital or, you know, in quarantine um, that has the virus or they don't know anyone who's died, they're just sort of, like, been hearing about it on the news and it's scary and they've been staying inside to be safe. But, like, you know, being scared of virus can only last for so long. You're gonna get bored, you're gonna be, like... Well, you know, this is my life now, I'll just try and figure out what to do with my time. And so I think the initial shock has sort of worn off for a lot of people. Um, and it's sort of mellowed out a little bit. You know, not like to the point where they're going outside, but like, they've come to terms with it a little bit more. Maybe I'm just speaking of, about myself, but... It feels like, you know... It's all... You know, you're just watching YouTube videos. I mean, Vic and Hope videos are good. I really wish uh, Digi and May were doing that sort of stuff. But they don't. They don't do fucking anything. What happened to the content? What happened to the content? What happened to anything? What happened to everything? May's been doing streams. I haven't been looking at those, though. Streams are a little different. I feel like I have to be there. Oh, shit. Shade the Norris, just finished watching Gunbuster and Diebuster uh, and the Ben and Tom cast. My conclusion is that Gunbuster is based, Diebuster is cringe. I watched Gunbuster and Diebuster a few years ago. And, um, I liked them. But, like, I think I've mentioned this before somewhere, maybe on a PCP, that the, um, the ending of uh, Gunbuster was very silly to me. It was like, Haha, <laughs> lol, that's so unrealistic, that's so... Well, it's not unrealistic, well, no, it was, that was my complaint, is, like, the idea that they come back home, heroes, and the entirety of Earth is lit up, or something, in, in like, words saying thank you. And it's like, it's a nice moment, but I, I chuckled, you know, I chuckled, I had, like, uh, jollity at the, at the idea of, like, the entire fucking face of the Earth being lit up. Maybe it is possible to do that. I mean, especially in the future. But because of that one thing I said, um, the rest of the guys were like, Oh no, you fucking idiot. Like, you've completely missed, like, this, you no, know, it's the coolest thing ever. How could you laugh at that? And I'm like, I mean, is it really that difficult to understand how I would laugh at that? It's not that I think it's stupid, but, like, that interaction sort of, like, colored my perception of Gunbuster and Diebuster, and now I think it's something I need to have watched at a different time in my life in order to f truly get because apparently I don't get it right even though I probably do get it fine um yeah I think sort of like your first experiences of a media has your your own like very uh unique to you as, as long as you haven't heard other people talk about it um reaction to it you know but with that the, the first interaction of other people's opinions colors your perception going forward. I feel like if I just watched Gunbuster and Diebuster and had a pretty good time, and, you know, I didn't get pushback from it, I'd probably like it more. Or, like, think of it as higher uh, art. But because it was like, no, you didn't get it right! I was like, well, fuck you then, I don't care. Like, the same with FLCL. I liked it. And I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on in the ending. And it's just sort of weird. Like, I don't think there was a story there. I don't really see a story. And that's just me, like, having, like, my first impressions, like, um... First impressions of, like, finishing the entire thing. But, like, I didn't really understand. And I probably would have learned to understand it if the response I got wasn't, uh, like, negative. Of me, like, oh, you didn't get it the first time? You're a fucking idiot. The guys didn't say that to me, there was just some other people. Like, I, I, I got the sense that I was seen as a fucking idiot. 
I don't like it. But obviously FLCL is good. Uh, duh, I'm just rambling about nothing. What is other people saying? What is being said? His videos are actually... His videos are actually really good in res uh, uh, talking about Vic and Hope. Vic and Hope have great chemistry. They do. And the editing and, and everything is like, you know, you get to the... Just right down to the... You show what the anime looks like. You have a reference on screen to what they're talking about. You know, it's just the right amount of, like, contextual editing that I like. Canton doesn't do that because they know that if they put anime on screen, you're not going to understand. Uh, you're not going to be able to get past content ID or whatever. But as a result, Canton is, like, so much less um, engaging for me. Like, I don't watch the videos. I barely remember what has been talked about. I just hear their voices for a while. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like I've gone on the ride of watching this anime with them, because I haven't, because why would I watch anime? Why would I watch an anime that's, like, currently airing, if I'm not a person who already does that? I'm not going to watch a currently airing anime in order to hear about Digi and Nate's opinion on it. Um, so, like, I guess Canton is inherently not for me. Which is a shame, because it's like... It probably could be really good. But they haven't made many episodes. They, they've still got stuff from Radcon 4 that they filmed that I haven't seen, because I wasn't there for it. Those guys give a lot of experience. Hello, give and take. Hope you are having fun playing Ratchet and also Clank 2. Better pal name. The best one. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Sini. Thanks, Sini, man. I also like Ratchet and Clank, too. Fuck! Scary. God, I want them to group up so I can murder them all. But it just ain't the, it's what it's gonna happen. It just ain't the, the case. It was because of the third girl. She said she wanted to greet them when they came back and she followed them on her promise even after her death. Oh. I mean, I honestly can't even remember what the characters were in that show. It's the problem with, like, being a noob and then, like, listen watching something that is, like, groundbreaking for its time, but, like, you've seen things that have come out since. And so there's always going to be an element of like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I've seen that in fucking Steven Universe. And it's like, no, this is the greatest anime of all time. This is like brilliant. This is amazing. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Like, I don't disagree. It's just like I don't agree hard enough. And that sort of pisses people off. Well, I'm sorry. I wish I could like anime exactly the same way you do. Unironically, I wish I could, but I just don't sometimes. Doesn't feel good to be the outsider. I don't try to be. I wish I was, like, a big, like, loser. I mean, a uh, big, like, into, like, all of the things that other people are into. I say loser because my mind went to, like, Legend of Zelda and Batman. Things that are super large. And everyone has a fucking t-shirt of Batman with Legend of Zelda and also... Like, it's, it's like nerd culture, wow. And I'm like, totally not into Batman or Legend of Zelda. And I feel like, you know, I missed out on like, having cultural, like, friends. Cause like, Batman is like, ah, it's boring, it's stupid, I hate it. And then, like, hundreds of billions of people are like, Batman is the greatest character in fiction. I'm like, I mean, I, I maybe. You're just not watching the right Batman. You don't have my childhood. Oh, okay. I wish I did, I guess.
Media is fucked. Media is fucked up, bro. You watch it, you have thoughts. What the fuck? Vicken Hope is soul content. Oh, Vicken Hope is soul content is soul less. I don't know that it's soul less, but... Because, like, the, the subject matter is the same. Vicken Hope just turn on some currently airing show, and they react to the first episode, like, there's an anime that's going on. Um, and, you know, that's it. Canton is the same thing, but they know a little bit more about what what is the biggest show right now. Because they're more into, like... On the on the pulse of that SEO shit, but it's not soulless. Uh, in terms of yeah, neither are like any more soulful than the other in terms of like subject matter. But I just like the video production more in Vic and Hope. They go a little bit of an extra mile uh, to make it so that people who are not watching the currently airing show can understand a little bit about what what the conversation is about. You know. Canton has the GIF in the background, which is very RFCK, very, like, uh, grungy, like, uh, very hard to parse, um, silly shit that's funny. Um, but in terms of, like, profitable show venture, I don't know whether that's gonna work. But, you know, Digi does have, like, his fans who just like listening to him uh, speak, so he obviously knows something. Today we finally best Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh yeah. That's right, this is Five Nights at Ratchet and Clank's. There's gonna be Animaltronics. Animal Crackers. That guy over there will die. Uh, that's how I feel about Homestuck, LOL, Eternal Outsider. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't p watching, reading Homestuck when it was, uh, you know, the hot shit. I read it slightly after it was, like, um, winding down. So, like, Ben and Nate had been reading it, Munchie had been reading it, and, but when I got into it, it was in a pause, and it was sort of... The, there was no, there were no updates happening, and the, like there was a Kickstarter going on, and the Kickstarter was like infamous. It's still fucking infamous for being like a development hell, like all that stuff for Hive Swap. Chapter two still not out. I reviewed the first chapter. By the time the second chapter comes out, I will have been like not doing Hypocrite for more than a year if it ever comes out, but you know, that's uh, an aside, but like Homestuck, I don't know whether it's, I think it was like the way I got into it was different, I never had heard of Homestuck, I'd never seen anything of Homestuck, you know, I just, maybe I'd seen like, Hot Diggity Demon drew trolls once, and I didn't know what the trolls were, but he drew them so differently from what the trolls look like, that it's like, it's completely different experience. Um, but like, uh, I'd never seen Homestuck before, and the only thing that got me into it was Ben made a reference to Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff, and I thought, wow, that's really funny, what, is, is that from something? Or, no, I, I said, that was really funny, like, Ben, this is the funniest thing you've ever drawn, and he said, well, I didn't, I didn't draw it, it's like a reference to the thing, and I'm like, what's that? He showed me what it was, SweetBroAndHellaJeff.com, which is like, Deliberately shitty MS Paint, like, JPEG artifact. Like, an art form made of, like, shit art, if... Uh, kind of. Like, deliberately bad, but in a very specific way that is, like, you can tell there's actual artistry put into the shittily done thing. It's not like you didn't try to draw, it's that you tried very hard to draw badly. And, um, uh, it's really funny. It's, like, the funniest comic ever. And then he said to me... This is actually a comic drawn by a character in another comic called Homestuck. Do you know Homestuck? And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, you should read it. And that was it. There was no, like, 
oh, I've heard of Homestuck for years, and this is the best thing ever, and I really should get around to it. There was none of that. It was just, hey, you should read Homestuck if you like this. I was like, okay. And then I did. And I was enjoying it, and I was occasionally telling Ben, like, dude, this is really good. So that was the, probably the better way to get into Homestuck, is to not know that it's a big thing, and then to experience it. Uh, which is kind of difficult if you have heard of it, because so many people have heard of it. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, experience, points. Something that's brilliant for its time. Wow, that's exactly what I thought about 2001 A Space Odyssey. I like- alright, I, I, I- in contrary to that point that I just made, I already knew 2001 A Space Odyssey was a big fucking deal. Um, yeah, I've heard, like, I've seen references to it all over the place, forever. Um, and I sat down and watched it, and it was, like, really, really slow and really, really long, and I was like, wow, are they really gonna do this chimp thing for, like, this long? But, I don't know why. I really liked how long and boring it was. There's something about really long, slow-paced movies that are my favorite thing. So it was kind of just a, a happy accident that I that it happened to be an extremely long, drawn-out movie because I kind of like those sort of things. Things that are extremely quiet and take a long time to get going. Um, things that are too fast are like... On the one hand, you've got 2001 A Space Odyssey. On the other hand, you've got Transformers, you know? Like, constant action, constant noise. I hate constant noise. Um, so it's like, um, you know, despite knowing that it was a big deal, going into it, I still managed to really enjoy it, and I kind of am like a big 2001 The Space Odyssey guy now. Not because of it being like revolutionary, but because of it just being the kind of movie I like. Which is uh, something not a lot of people have in common with me. Like fucking Angel's Egg. Really slow, really like contemplative and quiet film. Um, I was gripped the entire fucking time. I love Angel's Egg. Um, so much doesn't happen in it. And yet so much does happen in me, in my fucking soul. I love things like that. I love talky movies, like old-fashioned. Anything that you would consider, like, boring and not epic enough, I love for some reason. Don't know what it is. Oh, there's so many things being said, I can't keep up. I watched 60 Minutes when that was a thing, but then I cared about the show. I read it because of arm retrieval. Oh. I read it because of Armour Tribal and didn't hear about it at all previously. Good old 2017. Life was simple back then. Yeah, there's something about those. I hope the new Dune is like that. The new Blade Runner was good and it's the same director, so hopefully. Dude, Angel's Egg is sick, same as 95 Ghost in the Shell. 95 Ghost in the Shell. Is that like the film? I think I've actually seen the Ghost in the Shell film now. But, like, I had a different reaction to that. For that one, I was like... It was strange. I, uh, I didn't feel like it ended at the time when it would have ended. Like, I felt like it was just getting going in terms of, like, plot. And then it finished. I was like, oh. Well, wait. I have a lot of strange opinions. People can't get a grip on what's, what's in my head because I had, like... I like 2001 A Space Odyssey, I don't like really Ghost in the Shell 95, which is like something that everybody likes. It's like pretty cool, but like I don't understand. I don't get the appeal. I would probably like the manga a lot more actually, because I loved fucking Appleseed, which is made by the same guy. Appleseed is like... I mean, Appleseed has a bad adaptation in anime. You know, knowing me, knowing, like, how contrarian I appear to be all the time, I would probably like the Appleseed uh, anime adaptation, or film, whatever it is. Because Appleseed is just, um, maybe there's a nostalgia point in that, in that, but like... You know, I don't know. 
Digi always finds it difficult to recommend me things. Even though he's like the recommendation god. He has all of anime in his brain. Or at least most of it. There was a fucking, um... What was it? What's the huge, like, mecha show that is, like, the biggest one in the world that's always the thing that people say when they say, like, mecha shows? Like, it's got hundreds of thousands of billions of iterations and movies and, and shows, and I can't remember the name of it. Um... Uh... Duh. You know the one. You go to the... You go to George Armani, eh? My dad knows him. Fuck you. Fucking heck. They're placed deliberately where the Raritanium is. That's the gate. In fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave and restock on the things I need. Gum, 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 Gundam. Yeah, Gundam. Gu uh, Gundam. Uh, I watched a Gundam show. Um where it was, like, one of those rings, one of those, no, it was a tube world, um, and it took place on the tube world, and there was a, there was a little boy who meets, who, who sees, like, an enemy soldier crash land his robot, um, he doesn't know he's an enemy soldier, and, um, you know, he just sort of befriends him, and the guy's like, ah, oh, shit, you know, he's like, ah, oh, shit, and uh, it was really cool. I forgot what it was called. War in the Pocket. Gundam War in the Pocket. That was a really good show. I really liked that. It was very short, but like, um... Yeah. Yeah. It was like a small scale... Oh, uh, a small scale story in a huge scale, like, um... World. Like, world, uh... Universe of, of stuff. Like, I don't really know anything about Gundam. But what I could gather was enough. I was enjoying, I was enjoying my time watching this little War in the Pocket show. I like things that are quaint, I like things that are quiet, I like things that are slow and contemplative. If there's anything with fucking clouds in it, like extreme emphasis on like really nicely drawn clouds, Laputa Castle in the Sky is one of my favorite Ghibli movies just because of the location. Because it's like, when you get to the castle and it's like this castle in the sky and it's the clouds and it's the music and it's the... Oh! I love the sky. The sky is my favorite thing. It's like up there. It's like up there though. It's like really up there and my favorite things. I like looking at the sky. I like looking at sunsets. Uh, you know, long walks on the beach, literally, actually, for real. Gundam 0080. Have you seen Kiki? Kiki's delivery service? Yes. I like that. It has a weird ending. Um, but the, the bread shop, uh, just the, the, the traveling from her home to the, the place was like, Oh, dude, locations are my favorite fucking thing in anime. If an anime has a really nice location, Aizoken has a brilliant fucking location. And usually all a uh, location needs for me to be happy is an emphasis on sky and or sea. There's a fucking level in, um, uh, oh god, what was the game? I was playing it for ages. Um, something, something 2, Nino Kuni. Nino Kuni 2 has a, a town that is like a seafaring sort of like uh like um partially underwater but mostly sort of just a small outpost town uh, floating in in the sea and um it's got a big eye uh, but the cool thing about it my favorite thing about it of all time is the small area where the brick the brickwork is like a couple centimeters under the sea level and it's just sort of like a splat, you walk through it and it's sort of splish splashing in. Like that is like my dream home, is to have an area where the, 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 the sea is level 
At a certain point, it doesn't, like, splash. It's just sort of, like, still. Completely calm sea with, uh, like, a brickwork stone thing, like, a couple centimeters underneath. So you can walk on the sea, kind of. As, like, a... So fucking good. I like that. I, it's what I like. And then, similar to that, is, like, Spirited Away, the train. The train that has, like, the little bit of land raised up, a little bit of sand just under the sea, uh, sea level. So you can see it. It's like, I love that shit. Like, I like it. Like, it's my favorite. If there was a game, if there was a movie, if there was fucking anything that has beautiful scenery, uh, it's my favorite thing. Angel's Egg has a really nice location as well. It's sort of doomy and gloomy, but it's... It's, uh, I don't know. Anything that has, like, lazy backgrounds is shit, and I cannot like it. I just cannot like it. k has great backgrounds because they, like, really referenced a real place. And, like, everything feels, like, physical. And then, obviously, One Piece is, like, there's so much really great architecture in all of those places. So imaginative, so goofy. World of Warcraft has huge buildings. I think I like buildings. I think I like architecture more than I like characters. Princess Mononoke is good as well. Um, there's less, like, unique, memorable, like, lo locations, but I do remember that one town with the wooden uh, stuff. The wooden walls. The forest is a little bit nondescript, it's just sort of a forest. I don't remember parts of it. Uh, oh, and the uh, fucking... What's it called? The first one. The one we did a Ghibli cast on. The, the one she was on. Girl with Bugs. Bug World. Bug World, the anime, the Ghibli movie. Um, I like that one, because of the Ash Lake place. And really of all the locations. Like, the, the town is really nice. And then the desert where the bugs are running. They're running. One Piece also has the rails under the water thing. Yes, but I don't feel as strongly about that, even though I love, like, Puffing Tom and the whole, like, um, train thing. Is that it's not on the ground. Like, it's just floating on the, on the water, which is cool. Um, but it's not the same. Not quite the same as, like, you know, the thing I like. In fact, I should, like, design a location in my pantheon, my conglomerate of world-building ideas. I should draw it, I should make it real, and then I should set a comic there and then make a comic. So I can have this shit. I can have it for real. What the hell's going on? So hard to aim this. Maybe a lock-on mod would be good for this. Norska of the Valley of the Wind, that's the one. Oh, and Wind Waker. Wind Waker has a lot of, like, the, the middle town. It's not very big, and there's not much in it, but just being on the shoreline, being anywhere in Wind Waker, like, you, you walk off of uh, any of those, like, rocky uh, islands that have nothing in them. Um, I just really like landing at those places, getting off the ship, and then being like, you know, I'm here now. I'm off the water. And there's like just a path down from the water, uh, from the rocks to the sea, where I can get back on my boat.
Everyone has their magic head world, but not everyone can tell its story. Yeah. It's the, the unfortunate reality of creating stuff, is that you have to do it. One of these days, they'll be like, we'll have computers that are so smart that they can physically create things that we can imagine in our heads. We'll hook our brain up to it, and then they'll make the best anime of all time, and we'll cry. And then, having the perfect, like, show, perfect film, that is like exactly what you want in your head will become sort of normal and blasé and then creativity will die forever. But until that point, I would like to have that computer to, do, to make the thing for me. The idea of it would be, you know, pretty epic. Saving time. Saving lives. Everyone will lose their jobs. I mean, in a, so in a society where this is a real thing, hopefully we won't need... Like, if we, if we have the technology to make computers that are so good at, like, stuff like this, um, I don't think we'll really need to be worried about, like, people ha having jobs. I mean, that's just sort of, like, the future. Like we only do these jobs because we need to do them because no one else is going to do them. But if we can, can t if we can tell a computer to do every single job, nobody needs to work anymore, and then humans will die out, and robots will be the new guys. And it'll be like, oh no, that's bad for the human race. But like, we're doing it to ourselves. We 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 gained we got too big for our britches. We gained too much intelligence, and we learned how to replace ourselves. Which is like antithetical to our DNA, which is the, the desire to continue the species and to reproduce. We'll just sort of like run out of uses. That's a whole big discussion. It's a cool idea. And it's far enough away from the future that I don't actually have to worry about it myself. Like maybe when I'm like. 70, there'll be a robot that could have done my job for me, but by that point I would have had a lifetime full of working. So it wouldn't really affect me, it will affect my children and my grandchildren, but like... I mean, what am I supposed to do about that? That's just the way things are headed. That is, if humanity even survives. What if... Mm, the world is destroyed by global warming? We all have to go underground, and then it becomes Grun Lagoon. Is Mass Effect Synthesize ending? Uh, I guess? I don't know Mass Effect. God, there's so many. I just need a spot to park. Fuck. Every time. Every... Oh, no, no, no. The ship's gonna get destroyed. Fuck. I just have to assume that as soon as they get close enough to drill, the enemies will appear. So I have to get out before I, I get near them. So like, park the car here. It's all ready, like. Right, I 
just go forward in a line and kill everything I see. Come on, come out. There you go. Mass Effect 3, you can choose to synthesize all the Milky Way races with omnipotent supercomputer bugs and live forever. And that's just Ava. That's just fucking Ava. Bro. coming out. Okay. God, I love media. Oh, yeah. It's so fucking good. You know, my brother, my other brother, not his shibi guy, um, often like, he doesn't turn his nose up, but he's like curious about the idea that I play the same games over and over again, and whereas he doesn't like to do that, he kind of gets bored of seeing the same thing over and over. And it's like, I was wondering about that, like, I mean, there's so much stuff in the world that, you know, you could watch a new thing every single day for your entire life. I mean, you couldn't finish um, everything in a single day, but you know what I mean. So it's like, why do I spend so much time on games I've beaten not hundreds of times, but like definitely more than six or seven times? Ten times, perhaps. Why do I play them all the way through? It's like... Oh, fuck, I need to start doing this. You know? Like, there's no right way to enjoy things. But, like, it's, it's difficult for some people to comprehend re-watching things so many times, or re-playing games. It's like, uh, aren't you playing the new game? No, why would I play the new game? I have the old ones. But there's new games all the time, and they're such big things. Eh. Eh. I just don't have the same level of give a shit. Whew. <sighs> I used to think, oh, that was a bad thing. Like, if I'm just enjoying myself with this paltry am amount of media that I have consumed, um, if I have, that I have consumed, then anything I create will be very derivative of those small selection of things. And if I'm going to be an artist, I need to fucking step it up and watch all the anime in the world. 
and all the cartoons and all the comics and you need to you watch and see everything in order to have a big palette of stuff to draw from and that's like that's true you know i said it in like a half like um f like made fun making fun of tone but it is a truth but you know i i think there's a level at which you know doing these um Consuming media becomes a chore. Oh my god. There's so many. Like, I played World of Warcraft for an extremely long time. Days. Months. Like, literal days, as in, like, 24-hour chunks. And it's like, um... You know, I could have spent that amount of time watching hundreds of different shows or playing, you know, multiple different games. World of Warcraft is supposed to make you waste your time because there's a subscription service tied to it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I guess. But I still like it. Like, I still like it. And it's curious to me. Like, what is the best way to live your life? I don't fucking know. But it's just a, it's just a thing to think about. Like, I don't need to play Ratchet and Clank again. I've played it so many times. It's the best one. It's the funnest one. But at the same time, why would I not play Ratchet and Clank if I do enjoy it? And I want to enjoy things. If I want to have fun. And it's like, um, there's also like speed running and, and, uh, and competitive play. Like some people spend ridiculous amounts of hours on those, but I think those are more accepted just generally because the end goal is like being the best in the world, being the fastest in the world. It's a competition. You're winning a competition. It's sports. People know what sports is. So they're more able to accept that as like a path. But if you like casually play a game for hundreds of hours, it's not that it isn't accepted, because lots of people do it. But, you know, maybe it's harder to, uh, to reconcile for some people. I don't fucking know what I'm saying. Time spent is time spent. Doesn't really matter what you're doing. Man, I remember grinding the weapons in Ratchet and Clank 2 was the worst. Maybe it's the worst. I mean, I'm pretty close to getting them all up there. But yeah, these ones... Like I said this the, the last stream, like, some of the weapons just are bad. And they're not good to use a lot. But you still need to level them up, so, uh... It's like you just gotta do this stuff. One of these days I might, like, try to figure out my thoughts on Ratchet and Clank 2 and, and analyze the, the mechanics in it, like, properly. I feel like I want to do that. But I don't want to make a product out of it. I just want to figure it out. You know, I'll make a video, but like it won't be like a sketch video, like Hypocrite. The ideal is something like Matthew Matosis, where it's just an essay, like an actual essay, video essay, um, that is nothing more than it needs to be. Which is like so much of what is missing out of basically everything on YouTube because in order to get big money or to succeed at all you have to add on bells and whistles to every video you produce uh, that ruin doesn't ruin the video because it's still watchable it's just like it doesn't add anything to the video and so to include it is um it's fluff it's filler it's you know not preferred.
things like the ends of a video where everyone says, you know, every video now, um, through necessity of like it, it working, has to say, don't uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, go to my Patreon. This video was sponsored by this person. Um, it's like you take for granted that videos just used to end, and that was great, and it was fine, and you were left. Like nowadays, a video ends um, like two or three minutes before it ends. And so if you're not really paying attention, you'll be watching a video for two or three extra minutes for no added benefit whatsoever. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, and it really isn't, but it's so much nicer when it's, like, it's only what it needs to be. So, like, video game analysis does not require skits, and so they should not exist. A comedy video can, you know, can have skits in it. But, like, a comedy, like, analysis is not funny. This is why I think Hypocrite was so difficult to write for, and why I got bored of it, because it was like, I was trying to do two things that didn't cl uh, didn't mesh well. I sincerely wanted to analyze things, but I also wanted to make people laugh, because I'm just sort of generally okay at that. And so, I meshed them up, and it didn't fit. You can either be a Jontron, or, a, or rather AVGN, and... Or, or an analysis guy. You can do both, but like, you gotta make sure that the analysis is funny if you're doing a comedy video, and you gotta make sure that the comedy is important to the analysis in an analysis video, and it's so difficult to make those mesh. Because it's hard to make analysis funny. Um, it's it works with AVGN because he's usually a analyzing why something sucks and anger is funny just generally. But you know, stuff. You know stuff. Corona killed sports, it's dead now. Uh oh. Uh, because it only uses up one sense, hearing. You can be looking, feeling to. Oh, I didn't hear the beginning of your thing. Gotta. Gotta pause and scroll up. Um, du -du 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 -du. Clank 2 Dabba Dee Dabba Da. Why is it that music is the most accepted media to re-experience over and over again? Perhaps because it, it, more than any other, can be a background thing. Or at least not a primary form of entertainment, even though it can, of course, be that too. Um, yeah, I think the background aspect of it helps. Uh, but also because it's it cuts right to the chase. Like, in a film, you go on a journey. You have a beginning, and films are all, like, I think everything, actually. Every media draws you in at first, hooks you. Literally, in music, they have a hook, or a chorus, or a thing that is, like, the thing that you like. And, um, you know, beginning, middle, end, intro, verse, chorus. So, like, uh, in a film... It's just a longer way to get to the climax. So it's like, watching a film takes a lot longer than listening to a song. Even if it's a long song. A song does not go on for multiple, more than an hour, you know? To get to the good bit. A lot of songs... Uh, what was that one? There's a one that's like... A very popular, like, song that is just sort of a dance music thing. And, um... There's a bit where it says, let's just cut to the good bit, and then they go straight into the chorus, and that's, like, the entire rest of the song is the chorus. Like, they're just sort of like, fuck the verse, we're not doing that. And then people just bop their heads and dance to that, because that's, like, the emotional climax. The thing you like happens almost immediately with music. Um, so it's like, you can, you can easily re-listen to a music, because it's like getting a quick hit of that emotional boom. 
And uh, listening to an entire album is something that happens less often because it's a climax built up of m many m smaller climaxes. But in an album, there are songs supposed to be like completely low key to build you up for the next song, which is more of a big thing. But the solos, like the ones that can stand on their own, are the ones that just have all of the necessary points, all the necessary bits, um, like in in one song, and the album has a, maybe a more enriching version of that, but it takes longer to get all the way through it. So yeah. That's why music, I think, is the most re-listenable. Accepted to, to be, like, re-listenable. I don't even think watching movies multiple times is, like, a, a thing that isn't accepted. I think it's just that... Um, current day, there's so much things being produced every second... Like, it's, um... Like, there's always something new to watch, is the point. I guess that's the same with music as well. But, like, a single artist doesn't make music, like, all the... Oh, I don't fucking know, actually. I'm... This argument is not going anywhere, and I don't even know what point I have, so forget it. Ah, oh, so much. Let me scroll up again and miss the rest of that. Because Annie Fred said something. Because it only uses up one sense, hearing. And you can be looking, feeling, tasting, and smelling other things at the same time. Dude, I love smelling things. Matthew Matosis really knows his vibe. His videos seem really nice and contained like an experience that I want to sit down and watch. He knows his vibe and his voice and any jokes are subtly integrated. Yeah, that's the thing. Matthew Matosis makes jokes. But they're always, like, a sentence he would have said anyway. And they, you know, it's a, such a small thing that it doesn't distract from his analysis, which is why when he does it, it works. He does it so infrequently that he can get away with making light of a certain thing um, to maybe uh, highlight some, I don't know, thing that is, like, kind of ridiculous. Uh, something that is not necessarily directly related to the analysis of the video game, but it's like a cultural uh, thing that we all know about, like blah blah something. Blah blah something that is not related, but here's a little quip about it. So yeah, those are good. Whilst being extremely chill and having the comedy be supplementary, yes. Musicians are the most successful artists, so that is that. Is that true? They might be the most successful artists compared to the amount of work that gets put in. Like, um, not to say that making an album is easy, but, like, what goes into recording an album, there's a lot less people involved and a lot less time involved than creating a film, which often has hundreds of people doing all sorts of different things. And the actors are the ones who get the biggest paycheck, but they're not, like, the most important thing. There's, everyone has to work together. In in an album, the people making the music do a lot of the work, but the audio mixing and the production and, you know, all the guys behind the scenes with the technology, they are important as well. You can't do one without the other. Well, you can't, you can't make the album without the production guys. You can play live music, but then you still need, like, people to set that up. So, like, the artist is only a part of the product. And the artist can be the person who does all the things in the product, but it's unlikely that that will work, usually. I do listen to albums almost exclusively, haha. -ha. Who do have film-length songs? I, I, would, I would challenge film-length songs. I don't think there are any albums that are as long as a film, I would say the closest you could get is like 50 minutes. 50 minutes to an hour, but most films are longer than an hour. I think feature length is actually defined by being 70 minutes at least. But, you know, maybe. I've no, I've, there's probably some sort of like avant-garde metal that 
takes a really long time to get going and goes for a really long time when it does. Yeah, I guess they would. Although, people don't notice that they listen to a music. They don't, like, sit down to listen to it. It could just be on in the background. Like, how many times have I heard a certain song on the radio just by being where a radio is? I don't know. There could be a song that I've listened to maybe 80 times. I don't even know whether I've ever heard a song more than a hundred times. Now that I think about it. Because a hundred is a big number. Like, I don't listen to a same song every day for a third of a year, you know? I switch things up. Um, there are probably songs I started listening to when I was young that I may have listened to a hundred times by now. But like, eh, I don't know. Like, I usually listen to music while I'm traveling, so how often do I travel, how much time does that take up, what songs am I usually listening to, um, what is the likely rotation of those songs, because I'm not going to listen to the same song uh, if I'm traveling a lot over and over again during that one trip. Um, and depending on how long the song is, that like means that I won't be able to listen to other songs in that same time p uh, frame. So, uh, hmm. You know? Dunno. Yeah, bro. Common as light. Hang on. Common as light and love... Common as light and love are the red valleys of blood. Wait. Common as light and love are the red valleys of blood is my favorite album. It's like 150 minutes long. Wow. I know people who listen to the same Spotify playlist day in, day out. Oh, wow, dude. I suppose if you need a, like, a, a feeling all the time, music is the easiest way to get it, then you, you're going to listen to it more. Actually, you know what? Part of it, of course, is the fact that songs take up less time. So just by virtue of that, the number of times you can listen to a song within, like, a length of a movie is obviously going to be a lot bigger. Uh, there's the boys. So close to all of these guys being dead. I can taste it in my bones or whatever. Just gotta make sure that I can get the ship over there. 
safely. Is this the last Raritanium? Did I get all of them? Yeah, it is. I got all the rare team. Wonder if it comes back if I die. Trying to think, the, the, the last two things I've got to do. The last three things. I've got to pimp my ride, whatever that means. So let me look at my items. I have 37 raritanium, really not that much. It is definitely going to be faster to do it in the planet place, the, the shooty area. Okay, let's go to a shooty place. Let's go to here, the Thugs for Less fleet. Let's get some Raritanium. Based and dare I say based once again. I do main Metal Sonic in Sonic Racing, the best kart game of all time. I never played a Sonic game in my life, except the times I have played them. Oh, you know what? There's definitely gonna be a nanotech hidden around here somewhere. I'm pretty sure. Um... I will look around, try and find it. I will also try to win. Because they drop Rotanium very often. There's, there's got to be one. There was one in the th the other folks for less places. Um, yeah, there's probably one in the hubris cloud level as well. Oh, however you say that. Hubris cloud.
You've heard of ghost ships in space and looks like one of the ones you should destroy has come back. Uh oh. Shoot it while in solid form? Okay. Oh, now it's a ghost. Fuck off, ships. What the fuck? What killed me? Nothing killed me. That's what fucking killed me. Enemies get in the way of my fucking torpedoes, okay. Jesus Christ. Die. Just literally die right now. I'm getting hit like every second I can't kill any of these guys like right on me there we go fuck you race through the docking bays okay cool I mean you know these races are the worst I think though if I get one of the better wings it might be easier to control but you know I don't actually care Gonna look for um, the nanotech. How low can I go? Whoa, I didn't know I could go this low. What's that? Oh, it's the ring. Lamau. Okay, how high can I go? Not that high. Oh no. It crashed. Fucking hell. I hope the thing didn't break. It looks like we're still on air, so I'll just do that again. There's only a couple missions. In fact, maybe it saved everything I did, so I basically lost nothing. This makes me want to play Gladiator again. We will get to Gladiator. I mean, not right now, but like, in my endeavor to play every Ratchet and Clank game I have, and then buy the others. Ratchet Gladiator. We call it Gladiator in England. I think they call it Deadlocked in America. That had some seriously good combat. I remember enjoying it immensely. Yeah, the gun leveling up, they, they really perfected that at that point. Uh, at least I think they did. I actually cannot remember what it was like in Ratchet and Clank 3 or whether it was any different. But, uh, you know. That's fun. It doesn't take too long either. And they've got all the bosses and it's like... It's hard, but nothing is like annoying. It's just really, really good.
Oh yeah, I saved everything. Because I, I, after I beat, like, defeat the ghost ship, it counted. Alright, so, um... Right, all I need to do is find... So there's this guy. Nothing in there. Fine. Then. There's this. There's nothing in here. Get fucked, little babies. There's the big one. Don't think there's anything in here. No, no. Maybe if there was one, I may have already got it. I don't remember the, that, though. And then... Ooh, whoa, whoa. Uh, there's this guy. And there's this guy. Um, where else could it be? Pretty epic. Whoa. Definitely a chance that there's nothing here. But I'm getting rare team, so that's the important part. I feel like if if there was one here, I would have been able to spot it by now. I wonder if the fighters actually are finite. There's a lot of them. Oh my god, I can't wait to be playing Ratchet and Clank 3 and doing the Quark little missions. Oh my god. Oh my god, I love Ratchet and Clank. Oh, Ratchet and Clank. Food glorious Ratchet and Clank. Oh, I'm getting like zapped by like stormy weather. I'm gonna go down. Yeah, it looks like the enemy ships keep coming back. Rare. Yeah, there's a whole big bunch new of them. A whole big new bunch of them. What is that blue? Oh, that's the uh, enemy. Oops. That's not the enemy. Alright, let's leave. Um, let's see how much we can buy. 
with like 70 something. Are you going to do all of the Jack and Sly and then die in peace? You know what? Yeah, why not? I mean, Jack 2 is going to be a nightmare. Jack 3 is a little bit less of a nightmare. Um, I, I think. Actually, no, Jack 3 is worse. Jack 2 is better than Jack 3. It's something I realized when I was playing Jack 3 not too long ago. But Jack 3 is, like, so on rails. Story mission, story mission, story mission. You cannot explore until basically the entire game is finished. And I'm like, I don't want to be in Haven City. I want to I wanna drive in the desert. And you're not allowed to. You're just not allowed. Oh, yeah. And there, there are definitely Jack 3 missions that are nightmarish. And they come quite early on. Like, there's that flying, like, the light eco-flying one that has always been a little bit of an annoyance. Alright, multi-torpedo launcher. Sure. Hyperspace warp system. Sure. High lift wings. Sure. Heavy... Cost? 5 round retainium to change? Back to standard wings? Alright. So it looks like we need 10... 25, um, twenty five. We can get twenty five. Let us go to this place. I'll explore this place, see if there's a nanotech there. Oh, Daxter driving the rocket? Yeah, fuck that. that. That's what I didn't like about Jack 3. Jack 2, the missions are difficult, but immediately you're in an open world, you can go at many places. Certain areas of the city are locked off. But Jack 3 is like a bunch of difficult missions as per the usual, but they lock you away from being able to explore before you complete all of those missions, and they just keep coming. Like, I was in Haven City, and I had to do the jacket, the, 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 um, the, the Daxter rocket driving thing, which is annoying and terrible, and I hate it, and it's so fast, and like, alright, I say to myself, fuck this mission, I'll do something else, and I can't. I can't do anything in Haven City, and I can't go back to the Desert City. There is nothing I can do in the game except this. And it was just like, I'm trapped. I'm trapped in a bad part of the video game, and I hate it. So yeah, that's my Jack 3 story. Alright, let's see if there's a nanotech around here. Premium nano boost. Probably wouldn't be in the center. So there's this ring here. Then there's these rings here. And they have a trash come out of them. Sometimes the raritanium is in the trash. You just sit here doing this. It's not gonna, not gonna be that fun. Okay, so there's this. Yeah, I'm guessing there isn't one. But you can't really go into these nooks and crannies. Oh yeah, more tree-ish. I do like that I don't crash. I could just sort of point my ship in this direction. Yeah, so that's that's that.
Oh, jeez. You just had to go and repair it, didn't you? Uh, so many story missions are straight aids. Yep, yep. It's cosmetic upgrades don't account for the skill point. I don't know if you know already. I would assume not, because if you buy one, it looks like you have to buy it again to get it back. So, you know. Lame. Lame is. Right, let's just kill a bunch of guys. Hmm, these guys don't seem to drop that much rare titanium. We're gonna one. I need like 30 or something. So I'm a third of the way there, basically. Come on, we we'll need another one. I do like the nuke. This one sucks. I don't want fucking shields, I want to kill. Just do this a couple more times, get the ship pimped, and then it's a matter of finding the nanotechs and getting all the weapons maxed. And I don't fucking know where the nanotechs are, so I guess I'll be looking for those. Wait, maybe this is the wrong one. Oh no, this is fine. They're gonna drop rare titanium. How do you guys feel about, like, Jack 2 having, like, Precursor Orbs as rare items that are very, very hard to find? You know, that would probably be a thing i try to do, is get all the Precursor Orbs, because that's something I've never been able to do. Like, doing the missions, that's hard, but that's required. Getting the Precursor Orbs is, like, insane. Like, how do you find those things? I could never imagine somebody finding them without using a guide. And then there, I feel like, I feel like, I don't know whether this is true, but like, I feel like there are certain locations where if you don't get the Precursor Orbs on the first pass through that area, you can't ever go back there to get them. So it's like, you could fuck yourself over if you'd like go to a place that you don't visit again, and you don't get the Precursor Orb. That sounds fun though, actually. Like, an actual, like, proper, real hunt for the Precursor Orbs. These guys suck. They don't give me rare retainium. It's only the, like, shitty ships. Why do they have that? Come on, where's the rare titanium at? Eh? There's one. I 
Maybe they don't give as much rare titanium if you keep playing the same missions over and over again. Maybe not, maybe just unlucky. Unlucky. Blech. 20. 10 to go. Probably 10. I, I might need more than 10. Oh yeah, I said 35, didn't I? Let's just get as much as we can. Just keep killing these guys until I die. That's more like it. Yeah, fuck you, big ship. Hey, clanky TV. I'm doing stuff. I'm trying to get all the skill points. Oh, fucking. I was nearly death. Right there. Uh, the rare precursor orbs are so flavorful, I love them. They are pretty fun. I think it was weird, but it was also like really cool world building the first time I, s I noticed. Or the first time I thought about it, because it's like, dude, it's the future. You go into the future, but of course, at the, mo at the beginning, you don't know that you're in the future in Jack 2. So the precursor orbs being there is like, huh, why aren't they all over the place? I thought these were like currency, and instead they're like rare artifacts, and like if you put the pieces together you'd be able to figure out that you're in the future before it's told to you through the story. And I thought that's cool. And it feels so great to find one and be like, yes, fucking got it. I'm so smart, I explored. And there's just enough of them, but not, like, barely any, to the point where it's, like, it's the perfect balance, I feel. Um, like Assassin's Creed or something, they have collectibles, and they're easy to find. There's just so many of them that you'll never bother to look for them, unless you, you know, buy the maps and find all the fucking things. And at that point, it's, like, it's not cool to find, like, a treasure chest in Assassin's Creed. It's, like... Yeah, okay, next one. Let's, let's, let's go. I just need it. I just need it because of the checklist. I hate this part, lol. But Going Commando is one of the best games I ever played. Yeah. I'm not doing, like, the the original mission. I'm just farming Raritanium at the moment. This part was always a little bit difficult, uh, like, the first time you play it. Because your, your ship probably isn't that powerful at this point. And so you just have to, like, go forward, like, looking at them. Get as much hits as, in as you can. And then, you know, do the uh, the missiles until you run out. And then you hope that you get, a like, a drop of more missiles and you don't. And you just have to keep shooting them with your laser beam. Thirty-seven. I'll go for forty. I'll go for forty, and then I'll just blow up, and then I'll see what I can buy with that. Yes, one. Okay, time to explode. No, I didn't mean that. Okay, okay. Standard nose. You get this? Oh, there's another one. Oh, I didn't know that. Mega Mine Launcher? Damn it. I definitely have to get that. 
Let's buy the other wings. And the other nose. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll leave that. We'll go get 20. We'll go, we'll go get 15. That's what we need. Let's get it. Let's get it over here. Change of pace. There's not a lot of fighter jet stuff, ship battles in this. Like, there's missions, but like, not really much going on. Three levels. Oh, I missed. These rocks don't have that much in them. Sometimes they do, but it's a lot of waste. Gotta shoot the missile every time. It's like a metaphor for life itself. I do not understand. Rocks don't have stuff in them. I mean... I don't know, maybe they do. Sometimes you shoot a rock and it doesn't have anything in it. With a, with a rocket. You shoot a rock with a rock it. And the rock hit, hits the rock. And then the rock doesn't have nothing. What the fuck's up with that? Full shield, how useful. Come on, guys, come and die. Come and give me raritanium. Maybe there's raritanium in this hole. Where are you playing? On PS2 or PS3? PS2. I've got my. Good old PS2 right here. It's stretched to fit the TV, that's why it looks like that. Um, why is everything orange? What glitch is this? Was it because I was inside of that thing? Oh, that's funny. I was inside of the orange hole where everything has changed color. And then it did the cutscene for the next part of the, the, the next wave. But because I didn't technically leave the meteor with the hole, it continued, it carried over the color correction or the color changing of the, like, what would you call it? Color something. Man. Okay, I'll try. I'll try the race through the asteroid field. But I'm bad at it. I'll try it. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Nah, you know what? Let's forget it. <laughs> I've never been good at that. 
All right, I have 30 now. There should be enough for the uh, mining thing, and then maybe the two, the ship nose and the wing that I don't have already. So if I, in case I need those. So let's see. Got a skill point. All right, don't need to get the extra nose. Woo! Skill point. Let's have a look at the skill points. Got fucking air everything. Except for nano to the max and weapon envy. Oh, we're so fucking close, dude. We're so fucking close. I'm gonna go insane. Alright, so, um, I'm trying to think. Where would it be? I, I'll just go through the... We'll go through the, the places. We'll go through the places and check the map in case there's any, like, green areas that I haven't seen, like secrets. If there are no secrets, if I've seen the map everywhere, I probably have got all the nanotech possible. But, not necessarily the case. So I'll have to check. Yeah, yeah, I did all that. And I did all that. What does that thing mean? I can go through the maps like this. Oh, that's handy. All right. So the other map, this map. Uh, yeah, nothing on there. Um, Endaco, Megapolis, probably not. Ooh, have not been there. All right, let's go exploring. Let's go exploring. Is that just the max health and all mega weapons fully done? Yes. So it's just grinding now. About Gwyneth Paltrow's goop again. Huh? Haha, ha. celebrity makes silly product which costs a lot of money. Ha ha ha. Gwyneth Paltrow's just a... Uh, who cares? She was Tony Stark's wife. That's it. Alright. Um... I don't know where this leads. I think this is like the end of one of the pathways. She got big head. I gave everybody big head. All right, let's just let's just go. Wow, those dogs are big. No nanotech boost? Well, there's a platinum bolt, so I'm gonna go get that. And it's not here. It's the other place. Even though it's not, like, necessarily required that I get all the platinum bolts, um, feels like I may as well. Because... Oh, I'm stupid. Because I think if I have all the Platinum Bolts, I can afford all of the, the mods. I think that's how it works. Because there's only so many mods you can buy for the weapons. Um, so... Feels like if I have all the Platinum Bolts, I can buy all the mods, and then I can have the perfect Ratchet and Clank completion thing. Alright, so let's see. Uh, it's on around the other way. It's through this building. Yeah.
Hello. Is the roof is open. How do we get up there? Kind of wall jump. Um. Wait, the map shows me. It's a very thin thing, so like, yeah, I grab this. Hot take coming in. John Tron was never funny. Um, all right, explain yourself. It's all very well to have a hot take, but I feel like the people who make hot takes only say them because it's outlandish. And not because they have a, like a serious argument. So if you think John Tron was never funny, is that an exaggeration? Because I would say John Tron isn't funny now. But I still think his all of things have elements of really funny funnies. I know why I found him funny. It's because he has a silly voice. But you know, people who don't like silly voices probably wouldn't like him. State your case, I guess. State your case. If he wasn't funny even back then, how? Why do you say this? God damn it, doggy. Die. Dogs should be dead. That's my opinion. Fucking big head enemies. They're strange and scary. I don't find his voice and mannerisms funny. Well, there you go. That's entirely all of John Tron's comedy, is that he says things in a funny way, and he's loud and, and like crazy. The things he chooses to say are, like, often the, res the, the result of, like, off-the-cuff rambling funny things, or, um, like, uh, scripts that are written partly by other people. Like, stuff that Psychic Pebbles wrote with him, that's alright. But JonTron doesn't deliver those things quite as well. I think the best JonTron stuff was when he was working with the Continue guys in New York and he had like they, they gelled with his performer like the his way of performing better so they could write jokes that he could perform that would work I don't know how many jokes they wrote probably a few I know they helped with filming or at least Paul did but you know Best John, Tr Best John Tron was the ones filmed at Aaron's house, IMO. They're alright. I mean, I don't. I feel like, quote unquote, season two of John Tron, when he left Game Grumps, was like his best quality, like, stuff. Um, there are a few moments in, like, pre Game Grumps John Tron that were also, like, really funny because it's, like, it's stuff John cares about. And he's getting really upset about nuts and bolts. Um, I think, honestly, JonTron's best comedy is on Game Grumps, which is why it's a shame he left. Because he plays off of Aaron really well, off the cuff. But in scripted stuff, it's a little different. A little different. What am I doing? I'm just sort of auto-playing. Right, I did it. Now I die. Oh, it's a continue point? I'm dumb. Man yelling at video games started and ended with AVGN. 
Uh, medium agree. Not a hard agree, but yes. Generally agree that AVGN does the, the screaming thing better than most. Because he sees it as a, a character rather than his real life. Never watched Game Grumps. Ga Grain Grumps. I don't know whether I, I, I could recommend it now. Um, but there are definitely... Like, if you're looking for, like, sitting on the couch, uh, chatting, chilling out with friends style of, like, let's play content, um, then, you know, they're, like, the best at that specific thing. Sonic 06 playthrough is great. It's it's all just like you know that episode of AVGN where uh, he's playing fucking Spider-Man games with Spider-Man, and the idea of that is like to recreate the feeling of playing a game with a friend and you know just sitting on the couch together. It's like oh backseat gaming and all that. It's like that but real, and without Spider-Man. Oh wait, I don't need to. Get out, get out, get out. Alright. Next map. Click. Uh, I think Canal City. I already got the one on here. A few missions. Yeah. Well, there's a tiny little bit of green. I probably have already been there, though. That feel when John left Game Grumps seven years ago. That is kind of strange. It doesn't feel like seven years worth of time has passed, but I think it's mostly because I haven't been thinking about Game Grumps after, like, I stopped watching in, like, 2016. Which is four years ago. So, like, uh, I've only really felt that Game Grumps has stopped being a real thing for four years, rather than seven. Because Dan and Aaron were also good, and I liked them. I liked them for quite a while. No nanotech on Siberius? Okay. I should check out that... That, um... That green, though. It looks like I've been there, but not actually exactly there. Vic and Jess play Tony Hawk, that's it. Yeah, Vic and Jess were great. They have a chemistry. If only they could play video games more often. Only gameplay I watch these days is whatever PCP people stream or avoiding the puddle. Who's avoiding the puddle? I'm all about the puddle. That's my whole thing. It's the mud puddle. You big head guy. He's big. God, these guys give so much gold. Gold bolts. Some, well, they are kind of gold bolts. It's that, I think. No, it's not that. It's like what's above it, or, or the other way around. Uh, what's around it? How do I get there then? There's a big thing in the way, so going around it requires going around it. I don't think I can get there from here. No, nah, no way. I don't know why. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at these thousands of bolts I'm getting every second. This is actually quite a good place to farm 
uh, bolts of small amount. Okay. Is it possible I can land on this? It is. Does that mean I can land on it over here? Oh, it does. Okay. Alright. Well, what do you know? There's a platinum bolt. What do you know? Yeah. There's a platinum bolt. How do I get out? How do I get out? Help. May as well go over there and kill those guys. Just one more time. Oh, I lost my powers. Now they only give me a little bit. Shit, I got over a million bolts somehow. I guess that was like from doing the missions. What can I get for this much? This... I can get this. Well, fuck it. That's basically the most important, the most expensive thing left. Uh, the only other thing is the... the, uh... turret gun. Mega Mega turret. That's it. I need 550,000 bolts, and I will have had... I've uh, bought all of the fucking things. Also, I forget that I should check the map before I go. Okay. So, that's done. This, I'm definitely sure I've done everything. Oh, there's a little bit of green there. Testing facility on Dobo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I guess that green thing is an armor vendor. Okay, that makes sense. It's very hard to see what that is. Alright, let's go get that green. Okay, it's around here. 
Um, actually. Probably something I swing up into. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Ah, oh, fuck off. Fine, I'll do it all again, I guess. Didn't take long, wasn't difficult, but it's just like... Eh, there's some bullshit, by the way, just so you don't forget the bullshit happens. It's part of a balanced breakfast. Part of a balanced video game is to, to have bullshit. You need the... what was that? I saw Spiderbot and Secret. I was like, okay. Well, I have that. Good thing there's a use for it. I can, can swing up into anything actually. Is it bad that I've never been able to sit through an AVGN video? Uh, it's not that bad. I mean, AVGN is like. Uh, like, there's a reason he's on YouTube and not with a TV show. Like, anything that's on YouTube is all. is like automatically less good than, you know, something that could be on TV, usually. Especially if they started early, like, this was his big break to make YouTube videos, kind of. I mean, he didn't feel, he didn't think of it like that, but, you know. Um, it's not the best content in the world, but for the people, well, for one thing, People who grew up with it love it because it's super nostalgic and it's like the best stuff on YouTube at the time for years and still is very good. Um, so it's remarkable in that respect. Um, but there's a certain like cheesy factor. Like he's not... There's no like... I don't know. It's not clever jokes. It's, it's like an angry idiot. And angry nerd, like the joke... Like, what an angry nerd is. It's sort of like a dated meme. Because, like, you know, back in the day, of course, it was a... Oh, I see it. It's like a... You know... Nerds were not really a thing. I mean, the internet was new. Having, like, a nerd culture is new. Wow. Magic. This is really cool. Oh, and it goes back here. Nice. So yeah, it's not, it's not like really funny for everyone. It's specific sort of humor, but I don't know. There are definitely AVGN episodes that are bad and don't hold up. There are some where the jokes just don't land. Um, but there are others where, like, the jokes do land and they land in the sort of... That's so stupid that I can't help but find it funny. I grew up when it was first coming out, but I didn't like it that much. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not everyone's favorite thing. It's sort of like Doctor Who. Like, Doctor Who is very cheesy and bad at points, and there are definitely episodes where it's like, you really need to just be a fan in order to 
accept that certain things about it are bad um, and still enjoy it. Oh, damn. But, yeah, this it's still something I love. I love as a vegan. Vegan. Okay. So I did this. This one. Megacorp Games. I am pretty certain I got the platinum bolts for this. I didn't see any nanotech. Um, Megacorp Armory. Ah, uh, there might be one here, but I've been everywhere, I think, yeah. That's a little bit... That's a little bit right there. I think that is, like, the last area. Yeah, I should definitely go to Silver... Bolden. We go to Bolden. Silver City. Isn't it the same with MLP? Um... Yes and no. I think MLP is easily enjoyable by anyone who enjoys cute things. Um, it's not like it was so cute that we were able to ignore the bad parts of it. There were lots of things that were bad. Um, but there were lots of things that were just really good. Maybe it's a you have to be there thing. Like it's not, I don't know whether My Little Pony is like the same as like uh, Adventure Time, right? Where it's just it is good, and it is just good, and there's no dis uh, you know, debate about how good it is. You can enjoy Adventure Time today if you've never heard of it, and uh, it's just really funny and well written and done. You know. I mean, everything has bad episodes, but you know. What do you, what do you expect? Okay, so there's all this stuff. I think it's near the end that I get to the whatever. Favorite season of Adventure Time, Gib? I can't remember the season, like, things. There's, uh, there's quite a lot. It's like nine seasons or something. Ten seasons. This is going to take a while to level up. Like how many enemies am I going to have to kill? I might even have to like go into New Game Plus again. Oh yeah, that's definitely a Platinum Bolt right there. Um... Watch my... No computer. Hang on. What's Sakura? Like, MLP is a good show which is popular with pedophiles, same with Cardcaptor Sakura. Huh? What do you mean? Like, it's probably true. Um, but I don't know, lots of things are popular with lots of people. Pedophile is not like... I don't know. You can be someone who doesn't know what anime is, and you can be a pedophile. It's like, it's not, like... 
a correlation or a causation thing. Cartoons just happen to appeal to certain types of people. But they can appeal to many people. I think that's the goal of most media, is to appeal to as many people as possible. So, like, to make a statement about, like, pedophiles is like, okay. But, like, what do you mean by that? I think this one requires the spider butt again? Okay. Da -da -da. I'm saying it's unfortunate. Uh, yeah, but again, like, wh what is it that you mean by it being unfortunate? Like, no matter what, pedophiles are human beings who have interests. They're going to like certain things. Do you mean, like, it turns people into that? Or do you mean, like... Like, what do you mean? Because, like, even if a show is favored by pedophiles, that doesn't mean it encourages them to exist. It just so happens that there's, like, a correlation with their interest and the show. And if the show is enjoyed by many other types of people, then it's, like, there, it's not unfortunate because there's nothing necessarily happening there. You know, you can draw a link between two things. It doesn't mean there's anything, like, going on. Yes, yeah, like the Columbine shooters, like uh, Columbine shooters liking Doom, like Doom. There was a big like discussion about whether video games cause violence, but like everyone else who played Doom did not kill people. So like, there's a there's a correlation, but it's not any more unfortunate than anything else. They they're human beings, they're kids, you know. They would have watched some cartoons and played some video games. If an argument is to be made, like, media affects the minds of people in such ways that they do bad things if the media, like, is tangentially related to it, then, you know, ban all media, I guess, because everything has something bad in it. You could construe in a way. The Avengers involves killing because they kill the bad guys. They kill hundreds of enemy soldiers. Uh-oh. It, it means people are going to murder others. It's like, well, that... Nobody agrees with that. But then again, just because people don't agree with that doesn't mean it might not actually be true as well. So I guess we don't know. I ain't looked at the data. I don't know what the data is. I think it's saying it has a bad reputation for that reason. That's probably true. Like MLP, I mean, I, I've never heard of the card kept Sakura thing. I know it, in, it stars like a young girl, but like so much anime has like lolly girls in it. Why cap, maybe card kept Sakura got shit for it because that was just what was going through the, the public. Big dark window slash wall. There's this. There's that. I mean, I know there was a platinum bolt I got here already that involves spider bot going through a thing. Um, I thought the brony stereotype was furry. <sighs> I don't know. Everybody has their own opinion based on what they see on the internet. It's not like the good old days, which is like quote-unquote good old days, where people's opinions were shaped by just one or two sources of the newspaper and the, and the news on the TV. And you know, hearsay. Nowadays you can get like so many different people's perspectives and, and situations and whatever. Yeah, I got this one already. Oh, 
Oh, I wanted to go over it. Pedo stereotype is like the strongest in the world. Yeah, what is the pedo stereotype? Hang on. And it's warm in this room, and it started to melt. I got it. I'm back. Da -da -da. Yeah, yeah, pedo stereotype. Like in my head, pedo stereotype is just a man. I can't imagine a woman being a pedophile. Um, a man of really, I don't know, any age. I've seen like things on the news of like, you know, the 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 classic pedophile, which is the old fat creepy man with no, like, the, the crazy hair, like, bald, balding, sort of crazy hair, old man. They always take the really unflattering photos for, like, the crime photos, so, you know, there's that, but I've seen things like that, but I've also seen, like, younger looking men who seem perfectly normal having been shown to be a pedophile and keep someone in their basement, and it's like, what? Huh? He just looks like a guy. So you can never really tell. Alright, I need something sh fast to shoot these guys. Kill him, god damn it. Alright, this location. Oh, look. Alright, I think that is like the flying around thing. That's probably a secret. Or probably a nanotech, because it's not green. Fuck. In his 30s or older, cargo shorts and an anime shirt. I mean... That just, that says to me, nerd. That's like an anime weeb nerd. I don't immediately go like, oh, probably a pedophile as well. Like, that's a little fucking extreme. Unless, I mean, 
I do get the sense that like the word pedophile has lost a lot of the weight that it used to have because of the way that people overuse it. Like, oh, somebody who's a nerd, a bit of a creep, you know, probably has social problems, like you can't talk to people very well. Probably a fucking pedophile. That's a good idea. That's really like, you know, not over-exaggerating. Just because someone he has a weird, like, social, um, not social anxiety, just sort of social ineptitude and bad physical health doesn't mean anything. It just means that they look kind of bad and they can't talk to people and they are in bad physical health. To infer certain things based on appearance is to be retarded. Or, you know, retarded is a bit of a strong word, but you know what I mean. To be, um, you know, to not think at all. That is very unhelpful and doesn't reflect reality at all. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, I don't know, like, that's the stereotype, but, like, how many of real people actually believe that a person with anime shirt and cargo pants is a pedophile. Like, I don't think anybody would really think that. They might say it if, um, you know, they already don't like the person. That's usually what happens. Is they already don't like someone. Because of, like, some petty drama that doesn't mean fucking anything. And they make fun of their physical appearance and call them all the worst things they possibly can, such as pedophile. That's just sort of fashionable at the moment, to call people pedophiles as a way to insult their, like, physical appearance, which is really damaging, just in terms of, like, using the language to, like, make pedophilia not as bad as it should be, because it's bad. You shouldn't just go around calling people pedophiles. So it's like, in situations where the person is, um, is calling things pedophiles, it's usually because they already don't like the person, not because of just physical appearance. I think that's the difference. Did I see a fucking green? I did. Uh, serious topics. They're always so scary. I never want to say the wrong thing, but at the same time, it really gets you going. Okay, so that way, this is that way. And this way, this is the way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet that if I go down here, there's gonna be a nanotech. Oh. Oh. Okay, not that way. The other way. Yeah, it's tricky, especially for the streamer who has to actually vocalize it. Yeah, I mean... People take things out of context all the time, like it's, it's like a constant threat. If you put yourself online, and you have opinions and you say them ever, people are gonna find ways to, uh, you know, to like chop and change it if they don't like you. If they want to destroy you uh, and your reputation or whatever. What is happening here? But like, I don't know. I feel like most of my things I say are not that weird. And I don't have, like, enemies. That would, like, go out of their way to... Destroy? Okay, okay. For real. How do I get there? I'm looking at that, right? That is where I need to go. But the taxi doesn't take me there anymore. It takes me to a different place. I'm fucking here. And there's only one taxi, so what the fuck? 
I need to go to that platform right there. It looks like I can get it from over there. So let's try that. My initial point was Munchie bashing the show on Chibi Barkers because of the pedo association perspective. Um, I don't think Munchie was doing that well. I can't remember, but the Chibi Barkers, like, about card Cardcaptor Sakura. Munchie wasn't being serious when he was saying, like, pedo. Like, he doesn't see things like that. He just thinks it's funny to go to extremes like that. Like, him saying it's pedophile bait, or whatever he said, was just him saying the girl is really young, and the guy that she's with looks quite old, comparatively. I think he was calling the character a pedophile, potentially. And that was like a, like, tongue-in-cheek, like, haha, lol. They, they, she looks really young. What the fuck? I don't think it was like a, a dis, a, a thing on, like, Card Captor Sakura in general, and the audience of which could be pedophiles. Like, I don't think either of us had any idea that that may have even been a thing. It's just anime. Anime has small, cute girls in it all the time. Uh, what am I doing? I want to get the, uh... Wait, I already killed everything. Well, mm, ain't that nice. I just waltz on over there. Okay, it is possible. So, in this location, there is a part of the map I have not seen. That's the, f the current situation. Um, excuse me? Okay, that was one way. this thing and it's like it's funny like sometimes I notice that and it's like in order for Munchie to have real talk he has to say ironically unironically to preface it except when he's like already like in like a real talk mode okay let's check the maps so flying lab um I don't know could be Uh, probably not- oh, wait. There was that one green box. Okay. Uh, I'll go back to Snivlack. Maybe that last time I was there, there was a glitch. There was a glitch and I couldn't see the thing. Shit. What a goof. Oh no, it's still not doing the thing. Okay. This is going to be difficult. Oh my god. I am really curious as to what is up there. Because I feel like I definitely did this. Like, I did it on stream. I must have done it. 
And in when I go over here, uh, this is impossible. This is not like actually. This is literally actually impossible. I need to. Ch I need like a claw hand with eight fingers, because I need to have the camera like this while I jump, and that's. I can't do that. I need three hands. Oh. Uh, if worst comes to the worst, I can replay the entire fucking game and get to the same point. And you know what? Look, the door's open. I'm going to use the Visibomb gun just to see what's up there. Okay, I didn't see. I need to go this way. Up and around. Damn it, no! I need to get a good angle. Okay. So from about here, should be able to see what is in there. Looks like nothing. Looks like I got the platinum. Why does it go straight up? What the fuck? Yeah. It's empty. So on the map, it's bright green. Like I haven't been there, but I fucking have. Unless, unless this is a whole different thing somewhere else, like on top. But I don't think so. There's nothing up there. I'll just kill these guys, it'll be easier, I'll kill them. Fucking stop moving. I'm going to do this. I don't care how many shots it takes. This is the stupidest fucking enemy in the world. And I finally got it when I changed weapons, so I didn't even get the fucking experience. Fuck. Oh, now that happens? I 
I want to die. Kill me. Really, I started this topic because I find it really interesting and I knew you wouldn't brush it off like everybody. Uh, yeah, I mean... I try to engage with most things. At least when they're like presented before me. It does sound a bit strange and I can see why people would brush it off. Maybe you just need to like figure out a way to like open with it better. Hey, Gib, you heard much talking heads? Uh, is that a band? I think I've heard of that being a band. I have not heard them. No, I have not. Open the window. I think it might be a bit of noise, but it's so hot in here. And I need some of that air. Ooh. God, it's so much colder outside. Oh, the cool breeze. Oh, oh, oh. My favorite. This is pretty good for experience. I feel like if I do this like 20 more times, it'll level up, but I don't want to stay here for that long.
Oh, I see. You get the health, and then they kill you. Never realized that. Sort of quirky post-punk funky rock type stuff. Duh, duh, duh. Music. I don't know what Eno is. I know what ELO is. Dude, electric light orchestra? Electric night orchestra. Oh yeah. Brian Eno Gib. Um, uh, duh, I don't know who that is. He's unbreakable. No. Cannot go in between the cracks. The king of music. Oh, the king. You mean Elvis? He worked with David Bowie a lot and does a lot of ambient music solo. Oh, cool. I'm not, like, knowledgeable about that many musicians. I've probably heard Brian Eno before, but I forgot him. Okay, I guess I've done everything I can here. It's time to die. on the outskirts right now, though maybe there's a secret if I go all the way around. Very doubtful. Death. That's all I get. Let's do special shortcuts. There's two shortcuts here, I don't know what they could be. Don't get hit by Megapede. Kill Megapede in three minutes. That's hmm. That hmm. Is that doable? I don't have any ammo for that. Fuck. Yeah, that's bad. Didn't even fucking hit him.
if I can slice him. Fuck you. the impossible challenge just because it will give me a bunch of enemies to kill and I need enemies oh shit look at those guys oh, my god <laughs> They're scary now. At least I can see him better. At least these guys aren't bigger. They look so fucking scary. <laughs> Time for a gauge match. Bowie was very much a singles artist, and I'm an album dude. Yeah, I suppose. I've only really listened to his like best of stuff, and then Black Star because that came out uh, semi recently. I do like the idea of his characters that are present and in like eras of his music. It's a really cool idea. But like I don't really need to hear that in an album. I just need to know that it's a thing that's a real thing. And then it's like I get most of what I need out of it. Grinding, grinding, grinding. It's just there's not much to it. Do I even get experience from these guys? I feel like I don't. I mean, there's so little I'm getting. Maybe it's getting more. I'm running out of ammo. I don't want to be using these weapons. I feel like the arena gives reduced experience, but I'm not sure if it's true. It, feel, it definitely feels like it. I mean, there's so many enemies. Hey, 
Yeah, I don't care. I don't want to do a cage match. Oh, almost enough for that. I still need to fucking level that up. Yeah. Alright, so. Big Corp Games, blah blah. Silver City, Flying Lab, Thugs for Less, Thugs HQ. Oh, there we go, there's an obvious thing. Um, there's another obvious thing there. Trade Moonstones for Bolts. I think I did all that. There's a green there. And of course, Yeetle. I haven't gone in there at all. Okay, so Smog. Next stop. Eno, on the other hand, had four rock albums, and they're all 10 out of 10, and every track is great. Yeah, the Persona was the real innovation for its time. He did it so good, no one can do it anymore in music. I feel like Gorillaz is kind of a Persona. They do it pretty well. Although it's not like a person, like, acting. It's It's... It's a it's a fake human being or a fake set of humans. So it's not like the gorillas are going through phases, although they kind of are with their music. But that's also a thing I like. Gorillas really cool, having characters and shit. Like it's like one of my cartoons. Okay, where is that? That's this direction. Gonna have to level that up at some point. I don't know what enemies were good would be good for it. Maybe if I go to the first level, because the enemies have less health. They might actually be able to do something. I don't know. Alright, this is a pretty obvious one. You just need to fly in the right direction. I think I just land here and then from here I go somewhere. Okay, so... Oh, hell yeah! Yes, it'll go up there. Dare bring light to my lair? Gorillas was such a loss of potential though, they jumped the shark hard after Plastic Beach and haven't recovered since. Um... Maybe. I feel like... Yeah, everyone hates humans and whatever. But, like... Well, there's two ways to think about this. Narratively and musically. Like, I think... The music that's coming out right now is really good. The They've, they've been putting out a few new songs. In the... 
what was it called? The sound machine. So like, uh, musically I think they're still really good. Um, what was the one? The recent one, after Humans there was the summary one. That was sort of forgettable, and it was fine, but it wasn't much. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, the now now. The now now, and like, that was alright. But it wasn't, you know, but this new stuff is like really good. I feel like, um, in terms of narrative, I don't know. They ain't no liter literacy man, but I feel like definitely they had a whole bunch of cool shit in Plastic Beach and then they sort of dialed it back and now it's not like the biggest thing uh, like, um, you know, where it's not like overly complex what's going on, at least not in the music videos. This will lay. Yeah. Plastic era Jamie Hewlett art is peak aesthetic still. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I tend to agree. What am I doing? I got that thing. Oh, there's a, ooh, there's a little bit of green. Oh, there's a tiny little bit of green. Okay. Actually, can I go back? Can I just die? Can I just start over? Can I just destroy myself? Yeah. Do your thing full version was and is their last hurrah in terms of music for me at least. I do love that. I play that quite a lot. And it's one of, it's one of those ones like you, you start playing it and you're like, I'm not prob I'm probably not going to listen to the whole thing, you know. I just want to hear a bit of the, fr the beat and then you, you listen to the whole thing again. I feel like Humans has some pretty good songs that people overlook because it's in Humans. I want to listen to that more. scary. That's a big fucking boy. Oh, I didn't know he can fall down and hit me. That's not nice. And now you can't jump up, you fucking stupid piece of shit. Now I can have these guys kill you. Oh, they just kind of, they don't come out anymore. I love strobe light and Saturn's bars. Yeah. I hate that these guys shoot at things they can't reach and then, you know, lose, um, like ammo and thus t turn into dust.
I hate this enemy. It's like designed to be able to close distances way quicker than it should be. Okay, so it's around here. Where is it? Where is it? It's a little thing up there. I feel like if I get pulled up here, there's a thing I can jump on. Oh, there's this. That doesn't really give me anything. Or does it? I think I can reach that. Ha ha! Yeah, they deliberately made that so you could jump from there. Exploration. Platforming. Um, but where do I go though? Where do I go? I don't think I can get over there. I'm not even sure I can get over there. So like, what can I, where can I get? If I can get on top of those, I can probably reach that, and then I can go around there, maybe? Maybe? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the one. No, fucker. Oh. Fuck the helipack. Why does it even exist? Have to do all this shit again. Oh shit, people are saying things. Wasn't really a fan of anything in the last two albums, but current Noodle is cool. I think I'm gonna wear these shades for the rest of my life. Such a good line, man. Yes. One of those weird characters you've known since a wee baby grew up and at the, s at the same time as you sort of things. Oh, Noodle? Yeah. I was never into Gorillaz when it started, I never saw it. I heard Feel Good Inc. on the radio, but I didn't even know what they looked like. Until much later. But then Digibro stole it? Oh, the, 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 where these shades for the rest of my life. Did he steal it? I can't remember.
Wait. Oh, oh, okay. It was there. Get over there. So, like, getting up here, what what does that accomplish? Nothing. Is there something over there? Something over here? Gee, I just don't fucking know. I mean. Probably isn't over there. I mean, it's in this corner, right? I feel like it's right behind there. But, like, I know I can't reach that from here. This is the only thing I can pros possibly reach. I'll try it again. Okay, yeah, the thruster pack is just better. And there it is. There it fucking is. Let's see what's up here. Oh, a secret invisible box. Cool. Um, do not do that. Do this. Uh, okay. This is also an invisible box. Alright. Cool. Just wanna know. Alright. We did it. Hmm. Alright, as far as I can tell, that's that's all the things from here. It's funny how the little guys are now as big as the big guys. Oh, look at all that experience. That was good. Oh, still enemies to kill. I really didn't expect like the grinding to take this long.
getting so close. These enemies are pretty good for experience. You can you can physically see the bar increasing. Shit, I don't have enough. I have this. Talking about shilling is pretty on brand for gorillas, though. They just used to do it with a bit more sort of, I don't know, ironic vitriol. It was, but it wasn't shilling, and gorillas were officially over. Then they didn't label it. Over then. They didn't label it as just Damon Albarn because of gorillas is a bigger band. Oh, I can't pass that. I don't know what's going on. Okay, Damozel definitely has something. That looks to be on the grind boot area. Grind boots take less time, so let's just go there, have a look. Probably not, because I feel like I would have noticed that there's a grind boot place. But maybe. So you have to... Oh, for fuck's sake. Sigh. I was gonna say, you have to dodge those things. So there's no, like, alternate pass that I know of that you can just take.
Yeah, you're not allowed to jump onto the thing. Okay, it's probably not here then. The only part I think maybe could have. No, actually, there's no way. There's no chance. I am so. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Unless it completely matters. Is there a way to get back to that point? Because I feel like that's right where the thing ends. Oh, whatever. Let's just do the level. It's probably along the level. In a previous tweet, you said you contracted the coronavirus. How is that dealing with you? I said I may have. Um, I didn't get, like, tested with a testing kit, but I was very sick. Um, like, massive fever, bedridden, couldn't really move, uh, vomiting, you know. Was very bad. I think it was, like, in hindsight, it seems to have just been something else that I got while I was on the plane. Um, but it was still really bad, and I hated it, and I felt like I was going to die. Um, so, I don't think I got coronavirus. There was no cough. That I never developed a cough. And the my breathing was fine. So, yeah. I, I Whatever I did have, I've recovered from it, so... I'm just staying inside, trying to stay okay. Okay, yeah, this takes me to the other point. And from there, I think... That green blip is within my reach. And I can get that. Hooray. Yeah, this way. Oh, I get it. I know what to do. If I can terminate that shit. Then grind boot, I assume. Yeah. That's cool. 
Well, that's a cool moment. God, I'm getting a little bit tired, but like... I haven't done the, the whole game yet. I haven't finished the whole game. I'm so close. All I need to do is go through all of these levels, find the nanotech. If I can't find them, I'll look it up and then find them, but like... Maybe I can come back later tonight. I'm gonna have to stop for lunch, or like, dinner, rather, at some point. I'm so focused on Ratchet and Clank 2, I just really wanted to f I want to finish it. Hey Gib, who do you think is the closest IRL person to Vriska? Uh, well, thankfully, I don't know anyone who's like Vriska. Um, I don't know any celebrities who would fit the bill, because I don't know much about celebrities. Uh, gee, I don't know. Should I just perish the thought? I mean, if Riska was a real person, uh, she'd be in jail. Like, she's not a good person. But I really like her as an interesting character. And the idea of, like, saving her from her own self is, like, really compelling. I guess it's like, you, you know how like some, like, women, they have like a shitty husband who's a terrible guy, but they want to change him for, I want to, I can make him good. Like, that's what they think. That's the same sort of appeal, I think, in Vriska. But in reality, it's not a good idea. You shouldn't actually do that. Because if a person is terrible and you want to fix them and make them better, um, they're just going to take advantage of you. I mean, it's not like it's impossible, but like, generally speaking, not very advisable an idea. anything left to this level. Whew. There is the Hypnomatic right here. Maybe there's a secret... God, he's got a big head. Haha, <laughs> big head. Maybe there's something hidden here. I don't see anything. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, if anyone acted like Riska IRL, she'd be insufferable. Mean girls are only good in fiction, just like a lot of things. Yep. Like, the people they bully are also not real, so you don't have to actually feel bad. Delusions of grandeur. There's an ICP song about that. Like saving a girl and trying to change her life. It's a noble goal. But a lot of the time it's just like not worth anyone's time. People don't change that easily. If they're already like that, it's probably because of a bunch of reasons. But, you know, what do I know? I've never tried to date a mean girl. Like put someone who actually made me upset, who was mean to me. And try to change her, like, how would you even go about that? I have no idea.
Alright, let's just go to Yido. Let's do everything except the final boss. And, uh... Oh, hang on. Alright, what I'm gonna do, change of plan, uh, I don't know how long I've been streaming, but it's probably a while. I'm gonna stop streaming now, I might stream later tonight to try and finish the whole game, and uh, that'll be that. i got things to do right now. So, thank you for watching. If you've watched any of the other streams, thank you for watching those. Um, hell yeah. Wretched and Clank. Let me just quickly check. Cheats. Yeah, there's only one thing left. It's the 30 skill points. Weapon Envy and Nano to the Max. Okay, we're gonna do it. Next time, the end. The end of Ratchet Clank 2, fucking finally. Goodbye.